staying. When we, we used to be scared when we heard those stories when we was a little kid. I can tell you some stories. I remember one time I had my head, my head down. Because back in the day when the Holy Ghost moved, things was just different, man. It's just, it was just different. It was just different. We was hoping to go to heaven and scared of going to hell seven days a week. And every time they, we'd have a throw down service. And then it'd get real quiet and the message in tongues would go forth. And then for some reason, Sister Nadine always hit the key on the organ that sounded just like a trumpet. And you hear that, and you start looking around because the power of God was so strong and conviction was so thick that you just knew this probably going to be the night. We were looking for him. Anytime somebody was out of pocket, the trumpet's done sounded and I'm lost. But now, many of the church have joined in with the scoffers. Let's say we've heard this all of our lives. I remember 1984, the Lord was going to come. I remember when Ronald Reagan got elected president, he was going to be the Antichrist because Ronald Wilson Reagan was 666. I've heard it said 1960 what? 60, 1960, 1961, 2, 3, something like that. When John F. Kennedy was elected president, he was the Antichrist because he was a Catholic. Everybody's always, but now, now we've heard it all of our lives. And, and there are things in the news every day that are so much more powerful than Ronald Wilson Reagan or John F. Kennedy, whatever religion he might be. But everybody's still going on about their business and, and still living their life. And, and young people are still falling away and they no longer believe that Jesus is even coming anymore. Say, so what's the hold up? What's the what's stopping you? What's holding you back? I'm going to tell you today there's only one thing holding back the coming of the Lord. And it's listed to us in 2 Peter chapter number 3 and verse number 4. He's not slack concerning his promise. He's not wishy-washy. He's not trying to make up his mind. He's not saying maybe today or maybe tomorrow like we do, but he But he's giving you one more day. One more message. One more sermon. He has not come yet, Sister Maria, because he... Have mercy. He hasn't come yet because he is long-suffering to usward. Why? 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 Why is he so long-suffering? Why does he put up with so much junk? Why do we see things on the news, crazy things? And people have even said, if the Lord don't come soon, he's going to have to repent for what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. And the junk Sodom and Gomorrah did is commonplace walking on our streets. He ain't going to have to repent. But the Bible said he is long suffering to usward. Why? The leper said, if you will, you can. The leper said, if you will, you can. The leper said, if you will, you can. And the Bible says, he will. Why is he long-suffering? Why does he put up with so much junk out of people? Why does he put up people trampling the mercies of God? Why does he put up with people when they're broke at the end of the month, they pray for God to help them, and, and they splash all over Facebook, help me find a new boyfriend, and, and so I can go and be bad, and all of that kind of ignorant, silly, stupid junk. Why does the Lord keep putting up with all this stuff? I had to be reminded... I wrote myself a note. I'll preach a message about it someday. Why? Why does he keep on letting people offer up offerings on the altar of abomination? Why? Why? 
Why does he keep allowing people to enact legislation and, and do away with the National Day of Prayer because it might hurt somebody's feelings when, when like 90% of the United States of America still believes in God? And, and why does the Lord continue to allow so much ungodliness and immorality and uncleanliness and, and so much wide open sin? It's almost like people are thumbing their nose at, at the Lord. It's, it's almost like, you know, why doesn't He just come? When the, when the world is, you know, dressing up babies in neutral clothes because when they get old enough, they're going to let them decide if they're a boy or a girl. It's the ultimate, it's the ultimate slap in the face to God who made them both male and female. Why? Why? Why, why is he held off? Because the Bible says that he's not willing that any. Oh, Brother David, man. I've been battling this week, this week in prayer. Over some folks that it don't look like there's no hope for them. It looks like they've gone so far. This week, I've even asked myself, Marcus, over the last couple of months, I, I've had conversations with other preachers about it. Are there some people that we should just say, I give up? I'm coming to a close. Because he said, if you will, you can. I submit to you today, the question is no longer if he will. The question is, is if you will. Because it is his will that not one more soul perish. That not one more person breathe their last without being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and baptized in the name that's above all names. He's not willing that any... should perish not willing that any should perish but that all would come to repentance so thank God for the leper who had enough courage to recognize within himself I'm gonna I'm gonna say this I, I wasn't gonna preach about it do you know that a person with just a little bit of leprosy in them could not be called clean by the priest? You could only be called clean when you had full-blown leprosy. You want to know why that is? As long as there's a good part left in me, in my estimation, I don't need him. But the only time I find myself needing him, Brother David, is when I have nothing left. He's, he's not slowing down, returning because he's intimidated or because anything's got to happen or, or he makes the rules. The only thing holding back the coming of the Lord is that it is not his will that anybody perish. So we don't have to come to the Lord and say, Lord, you can if you will. Some people look at me like I'm nuts when I when somebody's seeking for the Holy Ghost. Sister Sister Michelle, when somebody's down there begging, God, please give me the Holy Ghost, please give me the Holy Ghost, and I grab a hold of them and say, Stop! Stop! What does the Bible say? Since the Bible says he's not willing that any perish. Stand with me if you would. 
The whole mission today is to build your faith so you realize and recognize that it doesn't matter what kind of place you're in. That man full of leprosy was as low as it was in the days of Jesus Christ. But Jesus reached out and touched him and said, I will. The power of the Lord, the presence of the Lord that you feel in this place this morning. 